This is the Michelin Man, and this is the Copa 19 Plus. You'll never unsee that. What's going on guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my initial reaction slash first impressions of the brand new Copa 19, both the Laceless 19 Plus and the Laced 19.1. So first things first, the main distinctive element here of the new Copa 19 Plus is the fact that it's laceless, not a new thing from Adidas at this point, but that it also features a kangaroo leather upper. Pretty much a first from Adidas if we're not counting this or these, and honestly, neither of those really count in my opinion, so this is definitely the first time they're doing this the right way, I would say, because not only are these laceless, but the kangaroo leather you're getting on the boot not only looks to be very good quality, there also looks to be a fair amount of it. So you are going to get a legitimate leather boot type experience. Now, of course, the main talking point here is that the Copa 19 Plus is a laceless boot, which is something that I have been highly critical of on this channel, not just with Adidas, but pretty much any brand that puts out laceless products. And my main complaint when it comes to laceless boots is that you don't have that adjustability. It's kind of a predetermined shape and if your foot doesn't perfectly match that shape you aren't necessarily going to have the greatest fit and there is no way to adjust it because of the laceless design now in the case of the copa 19 plus not only is it laceless but it also introduces kangaroo leather something that we haven't really seen that much of when it comes to laceless uppers and the reason why we haven't seen a lot of kangaroo leather is because leather as you wear it in softens up and stretches and the last thing that you want with a laceless boot especially is for it to overstretch because if it stretches too much because they're laceless and you don't have the ability to retighten the upper around your foot once it has stretched out sloppiness in the overall fit feel and performance is a huge concern now please keep in mind that this is just a concern because i have not tried the boots yet and nobody has really worn these long enough to really make any long-term calls on how this upper is going to hold up how much the upper is going to stretch if it stretches at all from what I've been told from people who have actually had these boots in their hand is that the kangaroo leather upper on this particular boot is extremely soft it will be according to these people and according to the pictures that I've seen one of the softest leather uppers on the market which is slightly concerning given the fact that they're laceless but if you notice as well Fusion skin is something that they're really preaching in the tech specs of this particular boot. It's not super clear on exactly what it is, but it does look to be some kind of a way of fusing the kangaroo leather part of the upper and the prime knit upper together. And I think they've done this in a pretty interesting way, because if you look closely, it's very difficult to see where the transition points are between leather and prime knit, which if you're comparing this to the Nike Tiempo Legend 7 Elite, I would say the main competitor to the Copa 19 Plus, the transition point between the leather leather aspect and the knitted aspect of that upper is very, very harsh and very clear to see. So they've definitely done something very different while still maintaining similar elements to that of the Tiempo Legend 7 Elite. You'll also notice that the kangaroo leather part of the upper does not have any stitching. There are little lines kind of indented into the upper that look like stitching marks, but they're just kind of pre-melted or pre-molded into the upper somehow, almost as kind of flex points within the kangaroo leather. And there is supposed to be some kind of an internal support cage as well to prevent the leather from overstretching. So again, just based on looks, it's very, very interesting, but without having tried them yet, especially long-term, it's really difficult to say how the final product as a whole is going to perform, fit, feel, and ultimately hold up in the long run. But what I will say at this point in regards to the fit is based on the pictures that are out there of people actually wearing these things, they look to wrap your feet very closely, which is a very good sign. Moving to the rear, the boot has what I would consider to be a low cut design with a prime knit collar. They added a little bit of padding as well along the side of the ankle, I think to match the softness and padded feel of the rest of the upper, which is an interesting design choice. And the heel liner is gonna be super, super important. But again, until I actually have the boots in my hands and have the ability to try them on, really difficult to say how that's actually going to be. It looks to have a pretty standard ortholite insole, which is typical of the Copa line, the modern Copa line, I should say. And then as far as the sole plate and stud pattern is concerned, they are now calling it an exo frame sole plate. It doesn't look to be too far off other variations of the different sole plates within the Adidas brand right now, but probably more along the lines of what we have from the Predator versus the speed frame that we have on the X line as an example. There is no longer an external heel counter, which I'm personally a little bit bummed out about I kind of like that element on a pair of football boots in general but not necessarily a big deal and you get all of that for the low low price of $275 which is not a low price 
If you're not into the whole laceless thing, but you're still interested in the Copa 19, you can go for the Copa 19.1, which looks to be pretty much identical to that of the 19 plus, but with the addition of a lacing system and a burrito style tongue. Aside from the obvious visual differences, most of the Copa 19.1 looks to be very similar to that of the laceless Copa 19 plus. You still get a kangaroo leather upper, you still get the prime knit towards the back. The collar looks a little bit different. It still has the whole fusion skin technology thing. It's supposed to have the same internal support cage as well in the leather part of the upper. And it uses the exact same stud pattern with the exo frame sole plate. So for the most part, you're not really missing out on any of the main features aside from the laceless aspect, which is replaced by a regular old lacing system running directly down the middle of the boot with a burrito style tongue, kind of reminiscent of what we saw from the messy 16.1, but running in the opposite direction where basically the lateral side of the upper flows across the top of your foot and then tucks into the opposite side underneath creating this kind of one piece effect without a true one piece upper construction, meaning that the opening is gonna be a little bit bigger and hopefully the boots are gonna be relatively easy to put on. For the most part, I think this looks really, really good. It does end up with a little bit more of a traditional look to it versus the 19 plus with of course the laces on the top of the upper as well as the Adidas stripes being placed on the lateral side rather than the medial side. And you get all of this for the price of $210 rather than the $275 price tag of the Copa 19 plus. Now, in regards to how these things look, I know that I just made fun of them at the start of this video, but I actually don't mind the look. Yes, they look like the Michelin man. Yes, they look like they were carved out of marshmallow, but as a whole, I like the distinctive look of both of these boots. And something that I think is particularly cool with the Copa 19 plus, especially, the one element that I think a lot of people don't like is the fact that they opted to not put any Adidas branding on the outside of the upper. So from the lateral side, it's pretty much just pure white leather. At least that's what it looks like with the only Adidas stripe branding being on the medial side. So they kept the branding here to a minimum and really made the highlight of the visual aspect of this boot, the soft leather, which honestly I think looks quite cool. Maybe not so much when you just have a picture of the boots, but on feet, I think they look really, really good. Maybe this is a weird comparison but the first boot that popped in my head as being somewhat similar looking is the Adidas Predator X. It's not quite the same cut at the rear, but the way that the stitching goes and the overall flow of the front three quarters of the upper is very reminiscent of that on the Copa 19 Plus. Now, as I'm sure a lot of you guys have already pointed out down below in the comments, the new Copa 19 Plus looks to share a lot of the same elements as the recently released Umbro Medusa 3 Elite. This is kangaroo leather, this is laceless, and it also has a knitted component to the upper as well. But what I will say, being that the two boots do seem to share a lot of the same tech elements, the way that the Copa 19 Plus puts all of those elements together looks to be a lot more sleek and advanced than what Umbro has done here on the Medusa 3 Elite. If you want a little bit more info on these, I'll leave a pop-up on screen. You can go ahead and watch my review if you haven't seen it already, but I can assure you that once I do get a chance to try out the Copa 19 Plus, I will compare it directly to this guy right here. And then as far as the Copa 19.1 is concerned, it just has a little bit more of a traditional look to it. Obviously the laces make the boots look more normal being that it does have a leather upper. It's just what we're used to seeing. And then the stripes have been moved to the lateral side rather than the medial side, making the distinction visually between the 19 plus and the 19.1 quite obvious, which I actually think is a very good thing. I would argue the 19.1 just looks a little bit better, a little bit cleaner, but honestly, as a whole, I do like the look of both. If you're wondering about availability, according to Adidas, they'll be available Tuesday, November 13th. So in a couple of days, you'll be able to get either the 19 plus or 19.1. And I'm sure there will be a 19.2 and 19.3 to fill in the rest of the line as well. If you're wondering about reviews, I'm gonna be reviewing every single model in this new Copa 19 lineup as soon as I possibly can. So when I get the boots in my hands, expect the video to go up on the channel very soon. And if you don't wanna miss out on any of those reviews, Views, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when those reviews go live. Anyways, guys, that is it for my first impressions on the new Copa 19s. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to support it with a like. If you have any opinions of your own on this boot, which I'm actually very curious what everyone thinks, leave them down below in the comments. If you have any questions as well, I'll do my best to answer all of them down below. If you aren't following me on social media, link in the description is all my different social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it may be. So if you're not following me in those places, be sure to go ahead and check that out. 
And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.